Good evening. Today you will hear information about San Juan Unified's redistricting process, including updates from the 2020 Census and the district's recently updated trustee voting areas. Final 2020 Census data was finalized on September 27, 2021. The data showed that from 2010 to 2020, San Juan Unified's population grew by 9.6%, or 30,902 residents. While every trustee area grew during that time, areas all grew at different rates. The trustee areas adopted this summer provided for a balance of registered voters as required by the law. You can see here that the total variation or the difference between the largest trustee area and the smallest trustee area was 3.6%. Using the latest data just made available from the 2020 census, you see that the number of resident voters in each trustee area has changed, but with some areas growing much faster than others. This causes the variance or the difference in size between the largest and the smallest trustee areas to increase. Under the law, areas may not differ in size by more than 10%. If the trustee areas remain unchanged, there would be an 11.3% variance between the largest and the smallest areas, which is more than the law allows. This table shows the demographic areas of current trustee areas based on two data points. The columns labeled TP represent the total population taken from the census. The CVAP column represents the citizen voting age population. CVAP is a measure of voting strength for minority groups and is relevant for determining compliance with the Federal Voting Rights Act to ensure trustee area boundaries are not dividing or splitting protected classes of voters. In terms of CVAP, the largest concentration of a protected class is in Area 1, where the Hispanic Latino voters constitute 18.8% based on citizen voting age population. This is an important consideration as adjustments to trustee areas are considered. Two map scenarios have been developed to meet the variance requirement under the law and reflect CVRP. Both scenarios are legally valid with variance of less than 10%. As you will see in the map scenarios, given the need to reduce the population in areas one and two, and to increase the population in areas six and seven, it necessitated other small changes be made to areas three, four, and five. Here we have the scenario one map. To help orient everyone on the map, area one covers the southwestern portion of the district in yellow, area two covers the central western portion in green, area three covers the southernmost portion in red, area four covers the central portion in blue, Area 5 covers the northeastern portion in purple. Area 6 covers the eastern portion in the beige color. And Area 7 covers the north central portion in aqua. Please note that the purple lines on the map represent the current trustee boundaries. We will walk through all of these changes with zoomed in aerial maps. Here you will see the area shifted from Area 1 to Area 3. This includes the area south of Fair Oaks Boulevard to the district's southern boundary and the area west of Wall Avenue to the district's western boundary. Here you see the area shifted from Area 2 to Area 1 and vice versa. The first change includes the area south of I-80 to Marconi Avenue and east from I-80 to Fulton Avenue. The second change includes the area south of Marconi Avenue to El Camino Avenue and east from Fulton Avenue to Wall Avenue. Here you see the shift from Area 2 to Area 4, which includes the area going south of Palm Avenue to Madison Avenue and east from Walnut to Manzanita Avenue. Next, we see the area shifted from Area 3 to Areas 2 and 4. The first change includes the area going south from Engel Road to North Avenue and east from Mission Avenue to Fair Oaks Boulevard. 
The second change includes the area going south from Fair Oaks Boulevard to Grant Avenue and east from Fair Oaks Boulevard to Marshall Avenue. Next, we see the area shifted from Area 4 to Area 6. This includes the area going south of Sunset Avenue to the American River and going east of San Juan Avenue to Sunrise Boulevard. Here we have the area shifted from Area 7 to Area 5 and vice versa. The first area includes going south from the district boundary to Auburn Boulevard and east from Mariposa Avenue to Old Auburn Road. The second area includes going south from Old Auburn Road to Greenback Lane and east from Sylvan Road to Sunrise Boulevard. Lastly, we have the area shifted from Area 6 to Area 5. This includes the area going south from Pershing Avenue to Madison Avenue and going east from Hazel Avenue to Madison Avenue. Here, we have the demographic breakdown for Scenario 1. You'll note that the variance for Scenario 1 is reduced to 4.3%. The largest concentration of a protected class is an increase in Area 1, with 19.9% Hispanic Latino voters based on citizen voting age population. Scenario 2 shares several changes that are the same as Scenario 1, with a few changes that we will highlight. The majority of the adjustments that we highlighted in Scenario 1 are also reflected in Scenario 2. Here, you will see a list of the changes that are the same between both maps. Here we see the trustee area shifts that are different between Scenario 1 and Scenario 2. In Scenario 2, Areas would be shifted from Area 3 to Areas 2 and 4, as well as an area shifted from Area 2 to Area 4. The first change includes the area going south from Engle Road to North Avenue and east from Mission Avenue to Garfield Avenue. The second change includes the area going south from Engle Road to North Avenue and east from Garfield Avenue to Fair Oaks Boulevard. The third change includes the area going south from Winding Way to North Avenue and east from Garfield Avenue to Fair Oaks Boulevard. The fourth change includes the area going south from Fair Oaks Boulevard to Landis Avenue and east from Fair Oaks Boulevard to Marshall Avenue. The demographic breakdown for Scenario 2 is shown here. The variance for Scenario 2 is reduced to 3.8%. The largest concentration of a protected class is in Area 1, with 19.9% Hispanic Latino voters based on citizen voting age population, which is the same as Scenario 1. In terms of the timeline going forward and next steps, on January 25th, there will be a board meeting where the board will review the map scenarios and receive feedback from these community input meetings. On February 15th, there will be a board meeting where the Board of Education will adopt and adjust a trustee area map. The deadline for adopting an adjusted map is February 28th. The deadline for the County Registrar of Voters to complete the implementation of the new trustee map is July 6th in order to be ready for the November 2022 election. Thank you for taking the time to learn more about the redistricting process at San Juan Unified. We look forward to hearing your feedback.